Hi, my name is Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. And welcome to the Creative Cow DSLR Essentials podcast. Now today, we're going to explore loading footage into Final Cut Pro using a special plugin that's suited for Canon cameras. That's right. Um, Canon and Apple have sort of collaborated a little bit, and Canon produces uh, a plugin, a login transfer plugin for Final Cut Pro, which provides people, you know, you and I and everybody else out there, uh, just one way of getting footage into Final Cut Pro. Of course, we could transcode it, we could use any other number of methods, but this, I like this method because it provides sort of an integrated approach to bringing your footage in. You can sort of log it at the same time, transcode it to say ProRes or another codec. Well, actually, you bring up a very good point that a lot of people forget. The whole idea behind log and transfer is that you actually add relative data, absolutely. and in fact, you don't even take all of the clips, just the parts you need. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's that's a big thing that I think is missing in the sort of the general, you know, generally speaking, in the transcoding workflow, is that sure you can transcode it to another, you know, another format, but oftentimes you're not being selective about it. Uh, you're not adding relevant metadata, you know, things about like you know, scene, take, that kind of stuff. And so I think this is a pretty cool approach. Yeah, we'll take a look at it in one second. I'm going to go on a soapbox for a minute, soapbox. which is that. I think there's a lot of people out there who got spoiled by DV tape. Yep. You know, we used to be so meticulous. When you and I started videotape editing, you know, we had nine gig hard drives hooked up to things like Avid's. Yeah, I mean, and that was big. That was big, yeah. you know, and you managed to work off of nine gigs for an entire project. Yep. We have more memory than that just in a single card in our DSLR. Yep. So obviously, you know, HD's bigger, but I think a lot of people forget that if you don't make some selects, if you don't get picky, you are not only wasting time, you're wasting money. Well, and, I mean, to be honest with you, in any production, I mean, you have a lot of stuff that you're never going to use. I mean, how... You know, shot we, ratio. Well, we've been guilty of this. You know, you're, you're setting up a shot and you forget the camera's recording and then the next thing you know, you have 15 minutes of the crew running around set, you know, cussing and kicking things over and that kind of stuff. I make you know? sure that goes over to the client on right. the screen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so let's look at the plugin. Yeah, let me show you how this works. So I'm here in Final Cut Pro and um, I've already gone ahead and attached uh, a camera memory card uh, yep. via, uh, via a card reader. Uh, and, and a faster memory card reader is going to help out here. So FireWire 800, Yep. or ESATA, or someday maybe a Thunderbolt reader. Right, and the faster card also, because as we're transferring over, it's going to move a little quicker. Um, and also in this plugin, because we're transcoding, obviously the speed of your machine is going to help a little bit in that transcoding process as well. But like I said, I already have this card mounted, so what I'm going to do is simply come up to the file menu here in um, Final Cut Pro, and then down to Log and Transfer. Now, in a second, Log and Transfer window is going to open up. Now, I should say that this functionality is not built in to Final Cut Pro, right? right? You actually have to go out to the Canon website and download this plugin, the Canon E1 plugin for Final Cut Pro, and it's free. Uh, and they actually just recently updated it, so you can go get the new version. But once you install that plugin and you attach uh, a camera, uh, camera memory card, all of a sudden, voila, here you can see all of my footage from that particular card. Right, and the thing to realize here is that the login transfer plugin is only for Canon cameras, and in fact, it's not all Canon cameras. It tends to be their more pro-oriented right, cameras. Right, the 70s, the 5D Mark IIs, that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, to be honest with you, it's a great plugin, but they have been a little slow on getting you know the newer, the newest cameras up there, the lower end cameras. So yeah, definitely check with on the Canon website about what cameras are supported, depending on which one you're going to use. So here in Final Cut Pro in the login transfer window, obviously here on the left is all my footage on this card. Uh, but I want to show you a couple things before we actually start logging and actually transferring this. What I'm going to do is come up to this little cog icon up here, this action menu, and I'm going to come down to preferences here. And in the preferences uh, window here, if I scroll down a little bit, here you can see I have my Canon E1 EOS Movie yep. plugin right here. Now this is kind of important, right? So there's different plugins that you can get. You know, here's the P2 plugin and the Canon one. But over here in the target format column, if I click in that, you can see that I can actually, while I'm ingesting this footage, I can transcode it to any one of the flavors of Apple ProRes, or I could also use the older Apple Intermediate codec. Yeah, and the benefit there is obviously depending upon how you're editing. Now, Apple Intermediate codec is going to be great if you're going to, say, an iMovie user or Final Cut Express yep. and need to hand off the footage, because obviously you need Final Cut Pro to get ProRes. Yep. I think the big thing here is a lot of folks get confused. They see the 4x4 and the HQ, and they immediately gravitate to the top of the list. Now, here, I mean, we could get in trouble here, Rich, because there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have fiercely debated this left and right. They're and, wrong. <laughs> exactly. That's just what I'm saying. There's been a lot of debate about codec use, especially when it comes to the various flavors of ProRes yeah. matching DSLR footage. Here's my opinion on it, and I'll just make it clear, this is my opinion on it, this is not a de facto answer or a rule of thumb, is that for most cases, ProRes 4x4 and HQ, 
are overkill for DSLR footage. Yeah, the, the, the fourth channel is going to be for an alpha channel, so you obviously don't need that. Well, the other thing about it is that these cameras right now, in the current crop of cameras, generally record with a chroma subsampling ratio of 420, right? right? So, sure, you can go to 422 or 444, but you're not really getting you're, that information. You, from a technical standpoint, you're making crap up. Exactly, right? It's just a whole lot of fancy math that's going on that's just sim simply going to result in bigger files that aren't necessarily really going to do anything for you, right? And, and the thing I like about ProRes 422 is that while it's an 8-bit codec and you're putting 8-bit material into it, it will kick into the 10-bit color space yep. when it comes time for color grading. Yeah, and absolutely. And so, you know, the, the two, the, I say the two or three logical choices here in this menu are either going to be just the plain old vanilla SD, you know, well not SD, like standard def, but standard SQ rather, standard, standard quality 422. Uh, ProRes 422LT, which is the light codec, and it's kind of funny, for years people have been, oh, you know, DVC Pro HD is great, DVC Pro HD is great. Guess what? This codec is about the same quality level as DVC Pro HD, you know? Yeah. And, it's, um, and it produces nice looking files, a relatively small file size. And then I suppose you could also choose ProRes Proxy. Um, proxy is just their sort of offline codec, if you will. And, and what's kind of unusual here is, it, and put these in order, is proxy higher quality than LT or lower? It's going to be lower quality than LT. The, the order, but the, the list the, is yeah, wrong. I know, the order is a little off. The order is a little off. So, you know, in, in your choice, and again, you know, test what you think, you know, works well. Um, again, different lighting situations might be more prone to noise, etc. Before you start on a big project, just ingest a couple clips in these different codecs. You mean I should test a workflow before I invoke yeah, a workflow? It's generally, generally a good idea, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just test on your own which codec you think is the best. For, you know, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and choose ProRes LT. It's a good, a good choice. So now that I've chosen ProRes LT, I can uh, close this window here. And then the rest of this process is just like log and transferring or ingesting any other piece of tapeless footage, right? So for example, I can come over down here to the logging area and I have a, a real number, I can rename that. I can have the clip name and I can also give that a name. Here's one little tip though I would say, is don't replace the original name of the shot. Right. Right? Because God forbid something happens to your footage and you need to go back to it, at least if you leave the original name here, and it doesn't have to be in the clip name, you could put it in as a note or wherever, right. but at least having that original clip name somewhere and uh, a correct reel is going to allow you to go back to an archive or something like that. So, but again, here you could do, you know, put in a, a scene, so I'll just do outside scene, you know, this was take four, I'm not really knowing, I don't really know what take it was, but let's just say in, it's camera A. But a good crew would have slated it. Yeah, and I'm just making this up <laughs> as I go, and we can put in a log note and say, you know, great shot. Right. Right, and so the, um, after you put in logging information, of course, well, this is one of the advantages of this workflow, is that just like any other piece of tapeless footage, you can come in here, and just like any other clip, Say I want to start right where right that pan starts, right about there. I'll just mark an in. With the I key. Just with the I key on the keyboard, come out, and let's just say, get that next take there, and I'll mark it out. And now when I ingest this clip, I'm going to be just ingesting just that part. Which means less disk space, yep. less time, quicker to get into editing. Absolutely. And here's one more cool thing that I don't think a lot of people realize about the log and transfer window. Now, this works, of course, with any piece of tapeless media, but it's particularly nice with... Uh, with DSLR footage, here in this little menu right here that says Name Preset, you can actually choose to create your own custom way that the file's name. Now, Apple gives you a whole bunch of choices here, but if you come down and actually create a new choice, here in this Naming Presets window, what we can basically do is create, you know, this is... Um, so maybe include the original name first. Yeah, so let's just do this, you know, use this for DSLR. I, you can see I already have another preset, but we'll just get, use this for DSLR. I'll click on it. And then, yeah, I can say, you know what, let's actually put the original name up there, right? So we'll have original name, and then maybe I want to do uh, the current date, you know, when I, so I know when it was ingested. Right. I could do, you know, the format, the video rate, any number of these things. You could put in a custom name, you could do a counting number, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Now, how you do this template is completely up to you and, you know, whatever your workflow is going to be. But we, in this case, we wouldn't need original name and current name because we're going right yeah, off the cards. Yeah, so, so I, can just, I can simply just highlight one of these, come in here and put my cursor there, one second, and just hit delete. Okay, so easy enough, it. and yep. it's giving you an actual preview of how it's going to name. Absolutely. So with the you know original name, the date, yep. uh, you probably want to do the date shot, and then include maybe the, the time shot. Of course, the other benefit of this log and transfer plugin is it actually takes the time of day time code Absolutely. and assigns it to the clip. That's a huge thing. Now, it's huge, but also a little perilous as well, right? 
And that, that's it's a really good point that the, the login transfer plugin will support time of day time code from the camera. Now you're thinking to yourself, how do I set the time of day camera? You know, time of day time code. I've never seen that in a menu option. Right. Guess what? It's the actual date and time feature <laughs> on the camera's <laughs> menu system. So if you go out there and your camera, you know, you've reset it or you know changed the batteries or whatever, and the, that camera gets reset somehow, and it's saying, you know, like you know, April first, you know, two thousand nine or whatever. Obviously, right. that's not going to be the correct date. Now, one of the things that I like to point out, a lot of people forget, is that these days most people's cell phone clocks are actually set by satellite time. So yep. I find that to be a very accurate way, especially if we're doing a multiple person crew, totally. that everybody's clock is actually tends to be set correctly and they can go off of that. Yeah, and it's a good point too when you're talking about multiple person and multiple cameras, is that you do want to ensure that all the cameras that are you're using on set are all, I mean, as close as you can get it, yeah. the same time of day time code, right? Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to use the naming preset here, but I'll just show you how easy it is to transfer. I and mean, again, we could do this for multiple clips, we could, you know, multiple cards even. I'm just going to transfer this one clip. Um, and all I'm going to do is just add this clip to the queue. And in just a second down here, you can see that it's transferring. Now, again, this process is going to take more or less time depending on how long the clip is. You know, remember, it's also transcoding. Right. But you can see that it goes along pretty quickly. And let me just close the login transfer window here. And back over here, and again, I didn't rename the clip. But you can see here's the clip and scrub through it. And just like any other clip, and if I right click on it here and choose item properties and format, you can see that in fact it is Apple ProRes 422 LT yep. because it was transcoded from its original H.264 file into ProRes LT. And it does actually have time code that ties off to when this clip was shot. Absolutely. And so again, you know, of course, this is specifically targeted towards Canon users using Final Cut Pro. And so, obviously, you know, unfortunately for Nikon user, you don't have this feature at the moment. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just one method of bringing things into Final Cut Pro. There's other methods, of course, that we've just talked about in other episodes: transcoding, using other edit applications that can edit natively, things of that nature. And I think a big thing to point out here is that if you don't do this right off the actual memory card, mm -hmm. you need to make a disk image of the memory card that has the whole folder structure intact, yep. and it's an actual clone. Because if they, you just have the media, it needs all those other folders yeah, of the yeah. data. And and when Canon recently updated this as well, they also updated sort of their list of rules, if you will, how the importing process happens when you copy things off of a card onto disk and that kind of stuff. So they well. got a little easier? A little easier, yeah. Good. A little easier. Good. Well, for Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. Be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where you'll find a DSLR forum with great discussion as well as Creative Cow magazine. And there's tons of back episodes as well. Just click the podcast tab on the main page and you can check out some of our other training about DSLR.